Hey, what's up guys? My name is Alex from Lenspo and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. Do you love using LUTs as much as I do? Well, I love using LUTs. I use LUTs a lot with Canon R6 I shoot with and it saves me a lot of time. But there are some different scenarios in our lives when we don't have a quality LUT with us for example, when we buy a new camera or we're renting out a new gear. For this sake, in today's video, I'd like to share with you what I found out, how you can use Color Space Transform in DaVinci Resolve 18, as well as color management to make your life easier and to show you lot less workflow. DaVinci Resolve makes color grading an easy task. And today I'm just gonna show you a glimpse of those tools and what you can do using this software. Let's start with Color Space Transform. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm using my Canon R6 footage. First thing we need to do is go to our effects library, find color space transform and drop it to your node. Right here we can help DaVinci Resolve to identify what type of footage are you using. Our input color space is Canon Cinema Gamut because this is what I shot with. Our input gamma is Canon Log 3 and as you can see only with two clicks we already have our footage transformed to Rec 709 and we can continue our color grading. One of the most important things to know about color space transform that this node has to be one of the last in your color grading tree. The main reason behind this is that your color space transform converts your log footage into Rec 709 and in order for you to have the most flexibility possible you need to make sure that your color grading nodes are before your color space transform node. So let's create few nodes before our color space transform by, by hitting shift and s on your keyboard. Don't forget to rename your nodes to know what is what. CST stands for color space transform. Then we can go to our primaries and continue with our color grading. We can add some color boost into the footage. Then we can move on to the next node and play with our curves. For example, just make sure that you switch on editable splines to make the smoothest S curve possible. And you can easily continue with your color grading. It's up to your taste. This is not a color grading tutorial. This is a way to show you how you can work with your footage without using any LUTs. The only thing I saw professional colorists using after color space transform is for example glow effect or film grain. Positioning of your nodes in the color grading tree is very important as well because for example here we can add glow effect to our node and just for the sake of this tutorial I will lower the shine threshold and play with spread just a little bit. I can switch properties of those two nodes by holding command on my keyboard and simply dragging and dropping one node onto another. And as you can see, when I'm changing places with glow and color space transform, there is a huge difference. Basically, after color space transform, you can use your LUT, glow effect, film grain, any effect you wish, but Make sure to play with your primaries before color space transform in order to use those log details. The other cool thing about color space transform is that, for example, when you are working with two different cameras, you can convert, for example, S log 3 to Canon log 3 and then start color grading your footage using two different brands. As well as DaVinci Resolve 18 comes with some really cool film LUTs which are built in into the software and they were designed to work with Cineon Film Log Gamma Output. So it means that I can convert my Canon footage into uh, Cineon Film Log right here and as you can see we got our details back. Then I can go ahead and rename my next node to LUT for example and I can right click on it, go to my LUT library. Here we have film looks. And for example, a lot of good creators use Kodak 2383D60. And just to understand how it works, you can see if I switch on and switch off color space transform, it gives us different results. As well as you can see, if I change my output gamma back to use timeline gamma, you can see that the LUT is no good anymore. Of course, you can go to your primaries and lower the contrast, but as you can see, it doesn't look the same. And let's change our output gamma again to Cineon Log Film. And you can see the difference is huge. Of course, there is still a lot of information I don't know about Color Space Transform. I use it on a very basic level, but everything I know about it, I just shared. Let's move to DaVinci Resolve Color Management. 
Whenever you are working with high-end cameras, for example, here I have Canon C70 RAW footage, you can help yourself with using DaVinci Resolve color management. You just simply need to go to your project settings, then to color management and change DaVinci YRGB color signs to DaVinci YRGB color managed. And here, as you can see, we already got our colors back. Then you can throw their red raw footage, black magic raw footage, and everything will be converted to Rec 709 for you without losing those details, as I said with color space transform that you have to put your notes before it. This is not the case for color management. Then we can simply go to our color tab and continue our color grading. If you are interested more in Canon C70 RAW workflow, you can check my previous video on my channel. As well as we can combine DaVinci Resolve color management with color space transform to be able to use our film LUTs, which are built into DaVinci Resolve. We can simply drag our color space transform onto our node. And here, the only thing we need to change is our output gamma to Cyan Film Lock. Then we create another node after that, go to our LUTs, Film Looks, and then here we have our Kodak 2383D60. Then we make sure that we create our nodes before our CST, and we can continue our color grading to our taste. I'm not a very experienced colorist, but I know a few things about DaVinci Resolve, and I just like to share this information with you guys because I found it on different sources. As always, if you find this video useful, please leave me a like, comment down below, and consider subscribing to my channel for more upcoming content. It really helps this channel to grow. Here on my channel, I'm sharing everything I find important when it comes to filmmaking and my dream is to inspire as many of you guys as I can to follow your filmmaking dream. As always, it is a pleasure serving you guys and until next time, Naskladano.